My name is Emmanuel Digby. Hey, my name is Elizabeth Efo Sutherland. Hello, my name is Amelia Penamaya Sedu. Uh, I briefly attended school. I went to school in, in America, a community college, and then Sarah Lawrence, and then came back to Ghana basically because I wanted to make sure that whatever I did with my life, that I did it in Ghana. So, I mean, I knew I was a storyteller, and I knew that if anything, I wanted to start and write stories over here. I studied theater in the U.S. I studied at a school called DePaul University, but I also spent a lot of time traveling around uh, the states doing stuff. I moved back to Ghana last year, yeah, and I started this in about April. But I've been doing theatre work here for a while, so it's been a, quite a journey. But yeah. I am a director at the Accra Theatre Workshop. I started working with Accra Theatre Workshop last year around August and since then we've done about four shows. This is our fourth show now. Um, I went to Pomona College in California and I majored in theatre with an, a, an emphasis in performance. So really that's where my love for performance started and I am really a performer at heart. That's my core interest but I'm really also interested in everything to do with the theatre and I really wanted to see a development in Ghanaian theatre so as soon as I was done with college I came back home looking for something to do in theatre so that's how come I ended up here. Um, I met Elizabeth last year and she had this brilliant idea to start the Accra Theatre Workshop so I was like this is what I've been waiting for because I hadn't found any avenues where I could um, work and feel fulfilled in um, the kind of work that I want to do. So I joined Elizabeth, we kind of banded together and created a craft theatre workshop and it's been going, it's been interesting, it's been hard work but it's been great work so I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. I guess I was fortunate enough to volunteer at a craft theatre workshop which was, you know, which eventually turned out to open, open this sort of platform for you know for writers so in that regard it was quite easy because she was she is someone who's who wants to do this and you, all you need to do is just do it but um, I'm also trying to do scripts and I think I mean I've had some certain situations where you talk to people and it looks like the project is going to happen and then they vanish so there are situations like that in Ghana where it's very frustrating where you meet people who talk the talk but then when it comes down to getting the job done it's just they're nowhere to be found and I was just fortunate that Elizabeth is someone who is passionate and who is determined to make this thing work. We are a new production company. We want, I, I kind of worked in New York for a while and I was looking for a space in Accra when I came back that, where, that was like a lab, you know, experimental theater, places that you could work on, interesting new work that was not typical, you know, not the kind of living room comedy that we tend to enjoy here. And I didn't find that space. So it was kind of, borrowing from a form that I'd seen happen, especially in theaters off-Broadway in New York, where you are able to bring a piece, whether it's finished or unfinished, to somewhere and get it polished and then um, sort of elevate it to a professional level. There's no sort of medium point between amateur and professional theater here. So this is what this is supposed to be. This style is quite different from what happens in Ghana, but it requires a lot of money. So until we are able to finish the registration process and be eligible for grants, we can't really be too crazy. So our next show is going to be more along those lines. But we've, we've got a really good reception so far. The, uh, I think it's four plays we've done so far. So, so far we've been growing quite organically and our, every show that we have, our audience gets bigger and bigger. So I think people are responding very well to our Karthi Atomology. We have some very hardcore fans, so we're very appreciative to them. You talk to children and you ask them to tell you a story and you give them an example. They repeat the example back to you. So if let's say uh, we had a program here, a playwriting program, and we asked the children to write plays about anything. And we said, for example, let's say an old woman goes to the forest and meets a goat. When we read the plays from that day, every single story had an old woman character. And for a child not to be able to imagine 
that's a big problem. So if you as a nation are having are raising children and to have squashed imaginations, you have a massive problem because imagination factors into everything, factors into problem solving. So if you don't have creative problem solvers, you're screwed as a nation. Um, so you really need to focus on awakening the minds of the people because you, you can't live hand to mouth every day. No matter how bad the situation is, you can't just live hand to mouth. You I'm talking business. Don't lie to me. When in business, you can't do a No, you are misinterpreting the whole situation. No, you, you are missing. You, you are not getting it right. Change is mine. You broke her heart and I put her back together. So if you think you are going to come here and take her, then you have another story, my friend. Okay, sir, you want me to be an ass? Then I'll be an ass. You know, what I find funny is that you think you and I are in competition. To be competitors, we need to be on the same level, wouldn't you? Are you my co <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our successful strategies are Connect Telecom and you own a cute operation with a typewriter. Excuse me, that's a Toshiba laptop. State of the art. Make 20 or 30. And then maybe you'll be fit to lick my boots. Yeah! <laughs> uh, 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 and you know what the true shame is? That your head is bigger than your body. The true shame is how <laughs> narrow minded you are. You're the gem of a woman who could be great except for the fact that she has you dead weight bringing her down. Oh! <laughs> Manuel is, um, has written for us before. Our first show that we did, um, An African Walks into a Psychiatrist's Office, he wrote one of the eight pieces. And we were looking for. A show to do around Valentine's Day. We, we are trying to get more writers and more people to submit their work to us instead of originating so much because we are really a place that where you can come and polish. Um, so we kind of extended the invitation that you've worked with us before, you're really funny, like um, his work is excellently paced already. So would you like to do our Val's Day show? And he said yes. So that's kind of how that happened. Okay, so basically I started, volu I volunteered last year for Summer Shakespeare, so at least that was my first time basically with um, so, um, a craft theater workshop. But then when she had, when she, in December, she had like a list of, um, she wanted to have a little platform for, for different kinds of writers to expose their work and I happened to write a play. And so that's basically how I got a little more involved and and then when the time came for Valentine's Day, Elizabeth asked me if I'd like to write a play, and I said, I'd love to. Oh, she still cares about me. <laughs> I don't know. TV Joshua. I think I knew divine intervention. Okay, I'll stop though. I think it's very necessary to collaborate as an art scene. Um, I don't think there's enough of it going on. Most, most times, that what I'm seeing, I don't know if I'm seeing the wrong thing, but what I'm seeing is that two groups will do an event together and call that collaborating. But I think that we need more create, creation of work together and creating work in steps, you know, where you, you really go through a process and you create thoughtful work and you layer it. I think more of that needs to happen. Um, we've found it difficult. I, I'm not sure if it's just visibility to find people who want to work with us. Um, create work with us because there's an issue of trust. A lot of people, their first reaction is, hey, you're going to steal my stuff, um, which we are not interested in doing. Um, and then a lot of people too also um, just are lazy, honestly. Because um, you start a project with someone and they never get back to you. And it's understandable that everyone is busy, but it's there's a lot of work that goes into, especially theatre, because you're, you're not just organising an event. You have weeks of rehearsals beforehand. You have all sorts of things that you have to think about logistically. It's not just something you get up and do in the last two weeks or one week. And people seem to think that, and, you know, you can just appear and it will be fantastic. You have to rehearse. So that's, that's been our struggle so far. Mm. So in Ghana, it's, it's very interesting, it's very two-sided. Uh, we have a group of people who I think um, are a little 
cautious about collaborating with other artists just because um, they feel as if their their audience base might, might be stolen if they collaborate. But that is really not the case, especially since we have a very small art scene, uh, yeah, generally art scene in Ghana. I think it's good if people collaborate and just help each other because that's the only way that theatre is going to um, grow and become big. So we've started collaborating with a few people. Um, Nana Sase, he's a poet for instance, he's very down to work with us. We have two events coming up. One is we're trying to build on the collaboration thing. So we're inviting people to bring in shows, completed works, things that are skits, whatever, comedy, um, drama, visual theater, puppetry, spoken word, whatever. We want to have a full day of storytelling. So we'll start with stuff for kids in the morning and we'll move into more longer pieces going on into the afternoon. So hopefully people will jump on that train. We have a few groups we have in mind who've auditioned for us in the past. Um, but we, we, we hope to have some new people as well. We just want a platform. So you bring your piece, we look at it, we give you some feedback, you take what you want, you apply it, and then you present it. So it's almost like a short workshop. Um, and then in April, we're gonna do a visual theater piece called Dreamscape. So that should be interesting, because I haven't, it's not a form that we normally use in Ghana, so. You see, the person behind you can never be in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things in the pipeline for a theatre workshop. We actually have a play coming up that's being devised by Elizabeth. She's going to direct it and I'm going to star in it. It's a one-woman show. Um, it's about a young girl and um, just the general topic of abuse, um, child abuse. So we're going to be working on that. It's going to be called Dreamscape. Um, so we're working on that and we're seeing how the Ghanaian audience is going to respond to it. The thing about this one is it's visual theatre, so most of the dialogue is not going to be in there. It's going to be a lot of what you see and different things that are going to be on the stage. So it will be interesting to see how people respond to it, but we're really excited to show that kind of work. Oh, see the times have changed. I thought you knew this world. We'll never ever wait for you The waters come past times of fighting So drop your guns and your swords And let us live all